Hi, I'm Wade from Confluent. In this video, we're going to learn how Flink handles serialization and deserialization. This is a critical topic in Flink because it often serializes more than you expect. When we work with Flink data streams, we need to consider serialization and deserialization from two different perspectives. As data is pulled into the stream and pushed out the other side, it may need to undergo a serialization process. We can think of this as external serialization because the objects are being used by an external system. However, Flink also does a significant amount of internal serialization as well. When data is transferred between operators in Flink, it will need to be serialized. However, the operators themselves typically include a user function that needs to be sent to the task managers to be executed. This means that not only do we need to serialize the data moving between the operators, but we need to serialize the user function as well. Depending on how they are used, classes that the user function depends on may also need to be serializable. Sometimes this requires us to use factory methods, static objects, and other techniques to avoid serialization issues. Internal serialization can also be tricky because although Flink is very good at serializing most Java types, it can be more efficient if the types follow certain rules. In particular, if a class meets the criteria of a plain old Java object or POJO, then Flink can serialize it in a more efficient manner. A POJO can be defined by the following criteria. It must be public. It must have a parameterless default constructor. All fields must be either public or accessible through standard getter and setter functions. And all fields in the class need to be supported by an appropriate serializer. If your class meets these criteria, then Flink can use the faster POJO serializer. If your class doesn't meet the criteria, then Flink will fall back to the slower cryo serializer. This can reduce performance by as much as 75%. You can improve the cryo serialization by registering your types with the serializer. This will bring cryo performance closer to what you get from the POJO serializer, but the POJO serializer will still be faster. Alternatively, if you want to prevent the serializer from using cryo, you can disable it completely. In that case, you will need to ensure your types match the POJO requirements, or you will need to register your own serializers. If you decide to use an alternative serializer, Avro is considered a good choice. Another advantage to using POJOs is that they support state schema evolution out of the box. This means that you can alter some properties of a message without having to worry about compatibility. For example, fields can be removed and the value of those fields will be dropped in future checkpoints and save points. Make sure to check out our Flink 101 course for a deeper exploration of both checkpoints and save points. Fields can also be added. In this case, the field will be initialized using the default value defined by Java. Schema evolution is a critical consideration when working with message-driven systems. The fact that the POJO serializer includes built-in support for it is a significant benefit. Combined with the benefits to performance and general ease of use, it is recommended to use plain old Java objects when defining your types in Flink. That takes care of data inside Flink, but what about data from the outside? It is typically interfacing with Flink through one of the many Flink connectors, such as the Kafka connector. This data can take many forms, including JSON, CSV, Protobuf, Avro, and more. Flink has several built-in serialization schemas for handling the more popular types. The JSON serialization schema can be used to convert from a Java object into JSON. And if we want to convert the JSON back to a Java object, we can use the JSON deserialization schema. Sometimes, we may need to provide a custom object mapper for the schema. For example, if we wanted to use the Java time module, then we'd need a custom mapper. In that case, we have to register it with the schema using a factory method. We do this because parts of the object mapper, such as the Java time module, aren't serializable. Remember that many components in a Flink job are going to be serialized internally, including the external schema. By using a factory method, the mapper doesn't have to be serialized. Instead, it's just created on demand whenever it is needed. Of course, this all deals specifically with JSON serialization. If you're planning to serialize using something other than JSON, you'll need to consult the documentation for the corresponding serializers. If you aren't already on Confluent Developer, 
Head there now using the link in the video description to access the rest of this course and its hands-on exercises.